is so proximate to the moment of delivery of the Supreme Court's decision in this pivotal case, did I learn that I fell on the minority side. <laughs> By the Constitution, the timeline for hearing and the termination was below a fortnight, and so full versions of the judgment had to come later. My summarized dissent thus grasped only the compelling elements of the case. Today, I have the opportunity to set out my opinion in detail. The question before the court was whether the presidential election conducted under one and the same electoral process with five other sets of election for the Senate, National Assembly, county governors, women's representatives, and county assemblies had been so compromised by operational irregularity and illegality as to compellingly attract orders of annulment. I learned that the majority on the bench had come to the unreserved resolution that the presidential election was a nullity and that the electorate must return to the polls. The position is summarized in um, orders which have been given on the majority side, indicating precisely what was decided. Thus, vital issues turning upon the democratic principle, issues of the terms and essence of the Constitution, of the statute law, and of the judicial mandate in the interpretation and crystallization of functional dimensions of the legal process had been so cursorily dispatched, maybe in answer to policy objects or to political persuasions or to other general social calls. For me, as an experienced lawyer and judge, but more particularly as a dedicated legal scholar, such an approach to contentious matters did short shrift to the firm and principled normative configuration of the law and the legal process, elements which alone would temper the motions of the social and political order and ensure that the mechanisms of governance remain attuned to the ideals of civilized process.